So, Natasha Jonas hoping to become a two-weight world champion. She takes on Candy Wyatt this weekend. I'm back with Andy Clark, and uh, I don't think we're going to learn too much from uh, how Tasha's going to be at this weight until Saturday. I mean, I, and I don't actually think it's anything to worry about or anything like that. Famous last words of a fool. But do you think that this weight might suit her a little bit more? Yeah, I think so, maybe, because when you look at her three fights, it's super welter. Each time she's weighed in at 149, so only two pounds above the welterweight limit, and that's what she's chosen to do. So she'd weigh in at 149, probably get in the ring at 149. So she has given that size away. So this time, maybe welterweight is, or super lightweight is what best suits her. So I, I don't expect it to be any, any kind of a problem at all. If anything, she'll probably just feel a little bit sharper. Her stamina might be a little bit better. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. I think that's a pretty good uh, summary of what we can expect. So Tasha just going through a couple of limbering up exercises. Joe Gallagher always uh, he always expects the worst. So as soon as I walk through the door, he's like, "Tough fight this." could all go wrong this yeah, tough yeah, tough fight yeah, yeah. this and I say you say that every single time but he says that Tasha needs that fear the fear that it could go wrong ever since um, Vivian Obenhauf the yeah, name escaped me there yeah well, I mean yeah. I can't I can't forget it the name didn't come immediately but yeah Vivian Obenhauf he said she did she look past Vivian and look what happened and every time she even thinks about saying the opposite he reminds her of that I, I remember that really really well because it was in Cardiff at an ice arena in a blazing day in August, I think, back in yeah, 2007. Next gen, next gen. Like that. Yeah, that's right. And, and none of us saw that coming. And at that point, to be honest with you, I thought, I thought that's it now. She's probably done. Um, and, and it's been amazing what's happened since then because she took that fight against Terry Harper. That came from nowhere for her. Great performance. Could easily have got it on the cards. Push Katie Taylor all the way, but at that point you kind of wondered, didn't you? You just thought, is, is the boat gone? Is it going to happen yeah. or not? Because she was in and around such a strong way, and then of course she stepped up a few weight divisions, which females physiologically are more capable than men of doing that, traversing the weights. But also the strength in depth with female pro boxing isn't where the men's is yet, so that's another reason why it's more doable. She's picked up those three world titles. And we kind of hoped that the undisputed fight with Terry Harper would happen, but we know it's not going to. There's, there's history there, and just there's problems that can't be got over, aren't there, basically? And that, that happens sometimes. But back down at Welter, Sandy Ryan's the world champion. All right, she's across the street, but, you know, fights between different networks are not Although impossible. Is she going to fight Jessica McCaskill? Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. Um, and Lauren Price isn't far away either. Yes, I know, that's the one that... Piques my interest. I'm just going to pause for a second. Let's just let's just hear a bit of Natasha Jonas pop on these pads. Okay, well, our, our challenger, our both fighters are challengers, but our challenger on Saturday night, Candy Wyatt, joins us now. Uh, Candy, great to see you here in Manchester. How are you settling in and how confident are you ahead of Saturday? Uh, we're settling in great. Um, Manchester's a great city so far. It's my first time fighting here, um, but we're happy with everything. Um, I'm feeling great going into Saturday. We had a really good camp. Um, I'm in a great spot physically. I'm in a great spot mentally. I'm just... I'm ready to go. Fight week's always a lot of hurry up and wait type stuff. So I am, yeah, I'm just ready to go. Ready to uh, lace up the gloves on Saturday and get her going. Yeah, I, I can sympathize with those feelings. There's a lot of hurry up and wait for us as well. Yeah. A chance for you to see Tasha Jonas in the flesh and a chance for her to watch you hit the pads as well. Um, other than the fact that she's a South 4, um, what can you take from, from this? Are you, are you someone that studies all of this or is this all just for the cameras now? I, I do think... Like this, the environment we're in right now, it's a little bit for, like, for the cameras type thing. But looking at her, we have Southpaw. We have similar physical builds, so I know she's powerful. So as far as studying, I left that up to my team. They they studied her and then designed our camp and our game plan around what they saw. So I just showed up to the gym and did what I was told, and that's what I plan to do on Saturday too. <laughs> Not a bad strategy. Yeah. May I ask you? Um, 
Joe Gallagher, uh, Natasha Jones' trainer, he, he just gave us a great line. He said, we need to be wary of Candy Wyatt because Candy Wyatt could easily be the Canadian Natasha Jonas in terms of Natasha came very close to winning a world title on a couple of occasions. This is your fourth attempt and sometimes you feel like it, it just won't happen. But do you now feel that you've got the experience behind you that you can finally get your hands on a world title on Saturday? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, but same same deal. We're not taking Natasha Jonas lightly. She's going to be probably my biggest challenge yet. But I I'm in a great spot physically. I'm in a great spot mentally going into this fourth world title attempt. Like I'm I'm excited to to bring one home on Saturday on Canada Day. And would you mind just? Not everyone will know your background and your journey into the sport. And uh, apologies, you're here to talk about the main event, but your journey into the sport, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, started when I was eight years old. I uh, just kind of stumbled upon it. I was actually in gymnastics, wanting to learn how to do a backflip. And the boxing gym and the gymnastics club were in the same building, but we could watch each other train. Amazing. Yeah, so I was just distracted at gymnastics, not learning how to do a backflip, and toddled on over to the boxing gym. And here we are 24 years later. There you go, that's amazing, what a transition. Yeah. And what about, uh, I don't know, I mean we've had Marie Decare over here before, but the, the status of the sport from the female side in Canada compared to here, um, how would you compare the two, you know, we've just come off of the back of a historic women's night at the top by Savannah Marshall, who's just behind you and Clarissa Shields. We feel like the sport is developing at a fast rate over here. Uh, how can you compare that to Canada? Um, you hit the nail on the head. The sport is developing fast pace over here. Canada, I really can't say that we're on the same trend. Um, Canada is not really a fight country. Uh, as most of the world knows, we really love hockey over there. Yeah. Um, but that's what makes me really excited to fight in the UK. I fought in the UK earlier in March, earlier this year. And it's just, it's a fight country. So it's, it's exciting to be here. And you can feel the electricity leading up to a fight. So... Yeah, Canada's, Canada's got some work work cut out for them to catch up to the UK as far as boxing excitement. Yeah, but if they need a star and someone to kickstart it, look no yeah. further. Yeah. Now, just to ask you about the previous experience against Kirsty Bavington here. How does that help in terms of, look, it's, it's not the same, but you've been here, you've been on the road, you've experienced the weather, you've experienced yeah. the, probably the poor cuisine, dare I say, but you know, you know what it's like to be here. Mm -hmm. Canada and the UK are pretty pretty similar in that sense. Like, it snowed when I was here in March, and I was just like, oh, yeah, okay. It's like, as far as stuff like that, culture and atmosphere, food, yeah. it's it's like I never left home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very, very comfortable here. Now you know why we're all so miserable. Just finally, yeah. is it, you are a long way from home. Um, have you got a message for everyone back home that couldn't be watching this? Uh Love you, everybody. Thank you for your support. Um, I'm really excited for to put on a show for you guys in, uh, on Saturday. I'm excited to see you when I get home. Bye. Wish you all the best of luck. Candy White, thank you very much for joining us. Take care. Thank you. Well, there you go, Andy. She went to a, a gymnastics gym, was supposed to be learning how to do a backflip. The boxing gym and the gymnastics shared a space, and uh, she couldn't help it. She got distracted, and the rest is history. No, I love that. I love those those kind of origin stories, if you like, foundation stories about why people started doing this in the in the first place, because they can really, really vary. Just looking at Jonas now, you know, she's been the first person to do so many things in female boxing. I mean, one of the only things she wasn't the first to do was win that British title. We watched Lauren Price do that, and yeah. she was working with us that night, and they said it must feel a bit odd not to finally be... You know, to finally not be the first person to get something done, but I, can't think what I, I just want to cut across you here, Andy. It? It's Mila, the daughter of Natasha Jones. What a great shot that is! Mila, Mum, and Joe Gallagher. She, she kind of plays quite a big in the story, really, doesn't she? Because she went to the Commonwealth in 2014, Tasha. We thought she would win gold. It didn't happen. After that, she she packed it in. She had her daughter, and she thought that was it, basically. But when she made a comeback to decide to turn pro, you know, it was post-pregnancy and, I mean, she described the first training session to me and it sounded absolutely horrific. Tasha. You know, just, Tasha. just getting the weight off, getting back in shape. It, it's, um, Tasha. It's not to be, it is not to be underestimated. It really isn't. Andy, uh, apologies. I'm going to stand up and I'm just going to try and, uh, Lawrence Lustig, sorry to bite in. I'm going to be two minutes with Tasha. Can I just borrow you? We all were live. Sorry, Lawrence. Lawrence Lustig always causing trouble. Um, Great shot, <laughs> great shot with uh, Mila and Joe there. Um, thunder and lightning on one shoulder and the other. Uh, 
presumably she's your inspiration still, Mila, and a, a chance for you to add another belt for her to play with. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, every camp I go through, she goes through. When I'm on a diet, she's on a diet. The poor kid spent two half terms and an Easter holidays in this <laughs> in this gym coming with me. So, you know, it's, it'll be good, good to have the rewards on Saturday and be able to bring them home. I don't know where she's going to fit them. She's already got them on her arms and legs. So we're, we're going to have to find somewhere else for her to put them. Joe Gallagher's already ticked me off talking about the future and what it would be to be a two-weight world champion. He said, you cannot take your eye off the ball with this one, that Candy Wyatt's a dangerous opponent. He's been drumming that into you for, what, eight, ten weeks. Um, you had a chance to watch her on the pads. What sort of fight are you expecting from Candy Wyatt? I'm expecting that she's, she's come over here before and had success um, and spoiled the party. I'm expecting her to come and do the same. She's tough, she's durable, she's game. So she'll keep, she'll keep coming, she'll keep throwing punches. And, you know, I prepare for the best version of her and, and I've put myself in the best per, per version of me to, to present myself. At the same time, what do you think would be the difference? You do have those brilliant technical boxing fundamentals which at any level perhaps put you ahead of the pack? I just think, you know, experience, you know, and, and, and plan A to Z. You know, I've been through it all, of the ups and the downs, and then, you know, I've come back and, and, and that, that, that moment have made me the boxer I am today. You started and it was one world title and now we're talking about multiple divisions. It's, it's all pretty exciting, isn't it? Did you think that you would get... Well, I mean, actually, let me rephrase it. If someone would have offered you this when you were probably at your lowest after your defeats, what would you have said? Yeah, I'd have bit the hands off. Well, you know, I've, I've worked hard. I've gone the long way around it. And, you know, through everything that I've been through, I've, I've, I was hoping and begging and hoping for someone to choose me. I was high risk, low reward and, you know, some people did, some people didn't, and now that I'm in the position to be able to, you know, choose opponents, to pick opponents myself, I, 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 take, a, I take a, I take a. I don't want to worry you, but I'm just going to turn the camera. So, if you thought that your boxing days were over when your career's up, it doesn't look like it. It looks like the next generation's ready to start. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's. I mean, she puts them on and has a go, but she's more interested in Keita than me. She loves her Nikita. She puts a Footy kit on and football boots and wants to play footy. So I'm happy, I'm happy with that. It's another sport I like. So. Oh, exactly. Nikita Paris. I mean, the Jonas family. I mean, you just, yeah, we haven't got long enough for you to list all the sporting achievements. Anyway, thank you for talking to us. Uh, you've, got, you've got an angry looking photographer looking to uh, take you on there. So I really want to talk to Mark Jeffers. Mark, come on in. I'm going to spin you right round. Mark, lovely to meet you. We are live on Squash Sports. Please don't swear. Um, late to the party, but by no means uh, too late. I mean, what an opportunity for you to. Get your name out there to yourself, platform. Um, uh, you've been given enough time. It's been a, a late sort of journey to this point. Mark Heffron pulling out, but Zach Shelley's in front of you. Um, can you do it on Saturday? Yeah, they give me two weeks. Uh, two hours no way, so I still beat him. So that's no bother to me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, good record. Perhaps if you don't take it as an insult, flying under the radar a bit. You've done your, your learning away from the cameras. Um, that might be an advantage for you that you know all about Zach Shelley but perhaps people don't know too much about you yeah I've been after an English title fight for about two three years now on to Kev obviously it's not just about shouting your mouth you've got to build your way up I suppose and like I said won, um, won me 15 make it 16 on Saturday talk to me about your training team as well the, the, you've got come from I can see the three of them there the, the good the bad and the ugly you choose but uh, you've got the two <laughs> The good, the good. I've got the. I've got to spin you around so you know what I'm talking about. You've got Kev Marie, Dave Jennings, and Michael Jennings. Um, you've got come from good stock. You've got a good team behind you there who are very confident. Yeah, we all know the drill. Um, like I said, two weeks no way spot. Oh, yeah. I've wanted this fight for a long time, so two weeks more than enough time. I've got uh, very good trainers. We've got a spot on game plan, and uh, you'll see how good I am on Saturday night. Does it make any difference at all that Kevin Marie uh, was was with Zach Shelley for large parts of his career? Been in the corner, knows exactly what makes Zach Shelley tick, or is it um, is that a good line for us? And it, it won't matter on fight night. You, you're concentrating on what you're doing. Yeah, it probably makes a good story, doesn't it? But that's not going to play a difference. I, I know exactly how to beat Zach Shelley. Me and Mick have been through the game plan all week. Um, yeah, that won't play a difference. Without saying I'll just be me, could you tell us how what the answer is to beating Zach Shelley? Uh, Punching his head in is probably your yeah, answer. But that obviously helps. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, I don't think you need to be a genius though, I've said this before, how to beat Zach Shelley. You can work it out yourself, you've done enough commentary, you boys. So. Let me just ask before you go, if someone hasn't seen your box before, how would you describe what you're all about? Uh, just mix it up a bit, just like to box, and uh, probably it. Slightly harder than people uh, ex will expect me to it. 
Good stuff. Thank you. I've jumped on you. Thank you, and welcome to the platform. Wish you all the best on Saturday. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Zach Chenny straight in if you don't mind. Uh, there's enough distance between the two of you. He, he just said there, Mark Jeffs. I know exactly how to beat Zach Chelly, uh, but he, um, you know, it, there's some narratives with all of this. Uh, you've heard it all before, presumably. Heard it all before. Sim said it. Uh, Jermaine Brown said it. They just got to wake up and apologise, as I say. You'll realise on Saturday. You're like, oh no, what's happened? What's happened? My plan. But yeah, we'll see. When are you going to get some luck? It's a, sort of another change of opponent, another late notice job. No Mark Heffron, but um, presumably the the game. Not the game plan, but the desire and the result in your mind stays the same. I'm not going to lie, I've kind of got PTSD from it. Um, I'm always worried that you're going to pull out. I'm actually worried that he might pull out as well. You never know. That's why I'm trying to keep quiet. I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to knock you out. I'm like, you do you, man. Believe your plan. On the ring, I'll tell him I'll knock him out, and then it'll be too late by then. But yeah, um, God's plan, right? And hopefully we can make the one with, uh, after defeat this guy, the one with Mark Heffron. Different Mark, same story, right? Do you know anything about Mark Jeffers? Uh, when, presumably, who, whatever the name that was going to be put to you, you were going to say yes at that point, but do you know much about him? I know he's undefeated, he's fought nobody really, and he thinks he's going to knock me out. That's about all I know. That's probably the music to your ears though, isn't it? That's what you're, you want to hear and you're expecting to hear. I'm happy i got a confident guy, because if he wasn't confident, he might pull out, so that's great news, yeah. Mind if I bring your dad in? He's, he's filming something like Zach Chilly Senior, Mr. Chilly. Good to see you, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm excited, yeah. Thank you, I'm very happy I'm here. Yeah, I'm uh, thankful for Mark. He accept the fight. I respect him for that. Uh, nearly three people pull out. Uh, it's delay for us, for uh, our progress, but uh, we still uh, powerful, we train hard. Ready and for anyone, uh, really, that to anyone? Anyone, yes. I'm very happy we see the fight uh, Sunday, it's, uh, exactly. Saturday. Uh, very good, yeah. I, I have to ask you, uh, Zach has got terrific self belief. He's told us where he plans to go and where he wants to get. Yes. How good is he and where is he going? What is his ceiling? Where's his destiny? Believe me, I want to say something happened a couple of months ago when Zach prepared for uh, for the fight for uh, yeah, he been he been in uh, much 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 room in the Imagine gym. It's yeah, to Ryder, John Ryder, three times. And third time, he, after eight rounds, you don't want anymore. And inside, behind the signs, uh, the ring is Mr. Uh, Con and Mr. Uh, ben. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Nigel Ben. Nigel Ben. Zach. When is Zach ready? Tell him Zach is ready today. Today is ready. Zach, congratulations. It's ready, my son, for anyone. Zach, this is why I say my son is the best super midweight in Great Britain. Because he's Great Britain. Because he's been tested for really, really three, four years with all top, top. Yeah, George Groves, James Miguel, yeah, yeah. Um, Christian Bank when he was super midweight. I've sparred all of them when I was born. We've been, we've been different places. Like sparred with top, top, the top in the world. Yeah. We've beaten all. So presumably what you're saying is, I just need the opportunity. Need the fights, need the opportunity. Yeah. I'm hoping, hopefully, after uh, Mark Heffron, um, Caleb Plant, I like that fight. I mean, because obviously Canelo has all the belts and it's going to be kind of impossible to get it. So Caleb Plant, that'd be a great step up for me. I believe he's a similar style to Sims. He's American. That'd be great for me to show my potential. Brilliant. Well, thank you for joining us, both of you. Thank you, Mr. Chelly. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, for John Ryder catching strays on the, uh, on the stream. Johnny Nelson, come and join us over here. I do love the Chellies, but poor, poor John Ryder, who is an innocent victim in all this, catching, str catching strays on the stream there. Um, set this one up for us, back at the arena. Uh, I'm going to move it on towards the main event now. Savannah Marshall, you know her very, very well. Peter Fury, you know, her, you know him very, very well. The ghost of Clarissa Shield, will it play a part? And this is from someone, how do you process defeat? And how do you come back from defeat when it's the biggest fight of your career? As Savannah Marshall got the mental fortitude just to put that in the past, that was Clarissa Shields. There's only one Clarissa Shields. Is that the sort of advice you would be giving her? So let's set the scene. 7,000 tickets have been sold. So it shows there's still an appetite uh, to, to see Savannah hopefully capture the world style fight. Now, when she lost to Clarissa, one, one thing I learned when we did the gloves are off was she was, she was a, bit, a bit more humble. I think it hurt her because she's a sort of fight to that, that, that says what they can do, there's no bragging and boasting. And I think because she didn't achieve or underachieved against Clarissa, and that's probably because Clarissa didn't let her, she's frustrated at herself. Now she's saying, I don't want to box for any level less than that, as far as I'm concerned. So now she's in for an undisputed world title fight. 
that's what she wants, that's what she needs because she believes that's a level. If she loses, she's putting herself under immense pressure because there's nowhere else for her to go apart from to the level she doesn't want to box at. So what you're saying is there was no need to have a lesser warm-up fight for her motivation and um, camp mentality, she needed on an equally sizable challenge and that's undisputed super middleweight belt straight she, away. She believes she's a world-class fighter she, and, and, and I can remember after a fight against Bruce I went into a dressing room and said you know what you box within yourself and, and, and that was probably taking the credit away from Clarissa. Clarissa didn't let her box to, to, to a full ability but I think Savannah got that, Peter got that, they kind of thought you know what if she goes in there and, and boxes and boxes smart and strong then against uh, Cruz de Zern, I think it, it's hers for the taking but she can't get dragged into uh, the emotional side of it. Like she kind of did with Clarissa. She tried to stand the ground to say, you're not going to bully me, you're not going to boss me. Now with this fight, she knows how rough, how, how much of a rough and tumble it's going to be with Cruz. So she knows, I'm going to box her, box smart, let the referee do his job, the rest should be enough. I, you, you can't take sides, but I just wonder if you really did appreciate uh, how engaging that gloves are off was I mean you, you've done them all and we've had all sorts but uh, Franchon Cruz de Zern, you have to tip your hat to her oh she bought something completely different that we hadn't seen before and um, it was brilliant to watch I wonder what it was like to host Andy she entered that she sat at that table like not like she was a champion like she was a challenge she was hungry she had a chip on her shoulder she was the one that as if to say I'm hard done by even though she's got all the bells I love that appetite, I love that about her because she thought, now you're coming to my game. Don't be making plans against for a rematch against yeah, Clarissa. Don't didn't get she? past me. Yeah. And she really, every time she got the chance to, she stamped her authority to say, you've got to get past me. And I, I love that chip on the shoulder as a champion because it still shows hunger and desire. I, I rate her as a singer. Uh, I know there's been some stuff online like she can't sing. I actually think she can sing. Can she sing? Uh, well, I want to try and be one of her backing dancers, but apparently I can't sing. So, uh, so she you can. <laughs> I, I don't want to let like what happens on the dance floor stays on the dance floor. But he, he can dance. If he can't, if you don't think he can sing, he can dance. Well, well I'm out. Bre Bre <laughs> Brendan, 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 put that in you. But I think you definitely can dance. Yeah, but she is. She's such a character. She's yeah. an all-round businesswoman, fighter. She comes here. This is this is a real 50-50. Yeah, so I'm looking on the backdrop, it's not there, but she's self-promoted uh, and self-managed, I think. I don't want to do anyone out of the job. I think Peter Kahn is involved with her. But self-promoted, fashion label, entrepreneur. Uh, husband's a coach. Husband's a coach. Undisputed super middleweight champion as well. Um, I, I know you said that she sat there with that ch uh, challenger mentality, but when she walks in the room, she has a superstar she's vibe. She's a star just about, yes. hasn't she? Yes, yes. She takes the attention. She, she, and I can remember when we did the first press conference, I thought, there's something special yeah. about this. Well, I was hosting it, you know, holding on for dear life to those <laughs> reins, but I just thought to myself, like, you know, you're in the presence of a she superstar. She didn't like Savannah get away with anything. She pulled on every little gap. Yeah. She said to say, you are forgetting who I am. You are forgetting you are coming for what I've got. What makes you think there's a plan B? Yeah. I love that about it. I encourage everybody to have a look at the, the, the out, the outwards of that press conference from Fran Sean because it was respectful, if not uh, confident, that she finished it with this sentence, this this um, statement. And I just go on YouTube, it's all over social media, you'll find it. Um, I'm gonna swing you round because in that group there, you will see the former world champion, that'll hurt her to hear that, but the former world champion, Savannah Marshall, who hopes on Saturday, she will become the undisputed 168 super middleweight champion of the world. And I want to introduce one half of that main event here today in the champ's camp in Manchester. Less than a year after she made history at the O2 Arena, delivered one of the biggest nights in the history of the sport and the biggest night in the history of women's boxing. She is back to do it again, to deliver again for the sport. Ladies and gentlemen, from Hartley Pool, England, I want to welcome the two-time Olympian, the former WBO champion, the former undisputed championship contender, ladies and gentlemen, the silent assassin, Savannah Marshall. So Johnny mentioned it there. Uh, earlier in the promotion, uh, it was fed back to me that, um, and this is, this is going back probably a month or six weeks, that Savannah herself had already sold 700 to 800 tickets. And I, 
I, I couldn't believe it, but at the same time you can believe it. Because if you go back to the O2, I wonder, I'd love to know the data of how many first time visitors to a boxing match are coming back or have bought tickets and how many of the new generation Clarissa, Savannah, and the rest of the card inspired. I and mean, then you just have to look around, look around the arena. There were there were different faces there. Yeah. There were there were there were audiences there that were probably not into boxing, but they just loved the fact that it was it was such high stakes. And I think Savannah has attracted more fans than you'd actually realise. People that are just her fans that all of a sudden are drawn in and, and sucking into into this game of boxing. But um, and she knows exactly how to play. Keeps her feet on the ground. She, she's very approachable, she's very mature about what she does, and she's very honest, which is like, which is something you like to see in fighters. You, you didn't mention Clarissa's name in all of that. I also think there was a dynamic of people wanted to see Clarissa get beat, but um, she actually left as a bit of a hero as well. That's a very UK thing. We booed her in and cheered her out. That was the, 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 like she won the respect. But let me ask you, um, will it make any difference to Savannah that Clarissa will be at ringside and she'll be at ringside supporting Franchon or is that good for us, good editorial but you know the ring's a ring, she won't hear and see her. So, so Clarissa's here to either support a friend or to try and conjure up uh, a rematch. Yeah, we know where it's going don't we? Yeah, you know where this is going and Savannah, she, as far as she's concerned, she's got to concentrate on herself to say this is about me, you know let me deal with what's happening tonight then I'll deal with you afterwards. So my advice is stay away from Clarissa. Until the belt, until after the fight, and then start. If you've got to sell that fight, make that fight. That fight is there to be taken because Clarissa is happy to come over here to the UK and actually be in the lines. Then, as a fan, what 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 kind of reaction will she will she expect? I don't know. I think the Savannah fans will give her a bit of a hard time, but well, she loves that. She's one of those fans that love that. And the other thing is, I've got to avoid her because I know her a grand because she. Um, she put a bet on with me. Oh my, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, but if you don't mind me saying, you're not the easiest man to hide. Do you know what I mean? Uh, not exactly a set of car keys. That's a, that's a quote from a film. Let me just ask you, uh, before I let you go, I can't see him here, Peter Fury. I'm, I'm not sure he is here today. No, neither, neither have I. There was, I was there this, on that day, and I don't, I don't, I'm not taking sides and making excuses, but Savannah did an interview on Sky Sports News where... Um, she sort of said, you know, we, we boxed the wrong fight. I, I'm summarising, and these were not her exact words, but alluded to the fact that maybe they, the Peter's tactics, uh, they didn't work on the night. And uh, people thought that it was um, it was portrayed online as Savannah throwing Peter Fury under the bus. They're solid, and they're as tight as they ever have. Peter Fury, of all the people I know, he's got broad shoulders. He can take that sort of criticism. But uh, do you think that that will have created a bit of a siege mentality? Um, like Peter will have instilled to Savannah like it's me and you against the world kind of thing or is that Peter's more long in the tooth than that? I think for more Peter he's going to say right you boxed the best fighter in the world and look at what you did so so that that didn't work out now with plan B works for us Savannah is very loyal and Peter is very loyal these two are tight yeah, they tight. absolutely tight. work for each other tight regardless like of what people have said Tight like cookers and cream, they work well together and respect each other. So it doesn't matter what everybody makes out about it, uh, makes out of the situation. Pete, Pete doesn't have to be here today. His, the hard work's been done. Now, now the rest of the work has to be done. Fight night. That's what he'll attempt to weigh in, get the weigh in done, and move on. And this is this is the kind of things that certain cultures feel they don't have to babysit their fighters all the way through to a fight. And, and Brendan did the same. I, I went to many press conferences without Brendan there. He said, "Get this done." Because all the hard work's done, now it's about you taking responsibility for your arm. That's what we're saying now. Savannah's here, she's taking responsibility for what she, the work she's done, and now it's down to business. I know I said I was going to let you go, but I've got one more for you. We spoke quite at length about uh, the difference that weight would make to Natasha Jonas, so it's only fair. I, uh, my untrained eye, Savannah's tall, she's got a good frame on her there that you always felt that she could go up through the weights. 168, will she carry power up through the weight? Will it suit her? Will she taking anything out of herself to make the middleweight limit anyway? Um, do you look at this as anything other than a positive? I think the weight is the difference. I think now we're seeing Savannah a weight that she's comfortable at, stronger. Uh, she's not have to drain herself down at. Uh, and she, 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 this is what she'll probably, when she's sparring with Huey Fury, she's happy to go in at this weight and above. Th we will see a better version of, of what Savannah man is capable of because of its weight and we realize how much of a difference it makes and she may even say afterwards you know what 
I could make the weight, but I couldn't perform to the best of my ability before. Yeah. Now this is me, this is my weight. And, and if she gets the weight, she'll understand how important that weight made a difference. Uh, second guessing, I think that she will, uh, I mean, we've timed that perfectly. Second guessing, I think if she won, if she was undisputed super middleweight champion, she'd say to Carissa Shields, come up and we'll do yep. it at this one. Let's be gay. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wait on the side of the ring here and I, I'm hoping that Savannah will come over and join us. Savannah, I just want to grab you very quickly because I, I know you probably want to get gone. Um, coming into this fight week, how would you compare it to previous fight weeks? And obviously you've been in these big environments before, but how does this compare? Same old. <laughs> the only difference is, this one's in Manchester, so I'm based in Manchester now. So I'm actually staying at home for fight week. I'm taking advantage. I'm sleeping in my own bed. I'm eating my own cooked food instead of eating out all the time, eating out microwaves. So that's, that's the difference. Johnny Nelson just um, emphasised that he feels that this weight up at 168 will benefit you, that maybe you're, you're not taking too much out yourself, that you might be leaving it on the gym floor. Uh, how do you feel? I mean, you were a big puncher at the weight below. Do you think you'll carry that power up? Um, how do you feel now? You've got those few extra pounds to play with. Do you know what? I always made I always made middle properly. I always brought it down weeks and weeks before. Um, it was tight, but at this weight, I'm looking at my body in the mirror, thinking, how on earth did I ever make middle? I'm literally what over a stone heavier, and I, I just I'm looking at my body, thinking, oh, I don't know if I can make middle again. Um, look, extra carbs, extra food. I'm lifting heavier. I, I feel like I'm 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 hitting heavier. I'm, I'm, I feel fitter, so you know maybe this is a, a newfound thing for me. Yeah, I mean you, you touched on it there, hitting heavier. Um, a lot of people are actually talking about boxing skills. That will be the difference in this fight. But from what you've done, presumably with Huey Fury and others, do you feel like you are hitting harder? I feel like I am. Yeah, I feel like I'm a sparring partner. I'm hitting harder. I feel stronger. I, I feel a lot stronger this way. I'm not getting pushed about as much. So. We'll have to see Saturday, won't we? You're going to be asked this question, so I'll ask it anyway. But how do you rebound from a defeat? Your first as a professional, how do you process that? Um, are you able just to leave that completely in the past? Is it playing on your mind at all? Oh, weeks of sitting in a dark room, forever on just Steve Deliveroo, eating what I wanted, put on about three stone. Um, Welcome to my world. Living as a normal person. <laughs> uh, no, I, I left that last year. Um, I'm over that look. It was it was bitter. It was a bit of a swallow. I'm so confident going into that fight and losing hurts, especially for me. I, I hate losing at anything, whether it be who can lift the most weight, who can be the quickest on the roll machine, whatever it may be. So yeah, look, I, I left that in, in 2022. Straight into the uh, fire, though. You know, you could have. Nobody would have blamed you to have a comeback fight at a lower level to to get back to winning ways but you were confident along with Peter there's no point waiting let's go undisputed if we can if it has to be at 168 let's do it there 100% I mean at these higher weights the, 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 the pool's very shallow there's no one there so what was I meant to do drop down to an 8 rounder and box someone that I was supposed to walk through even for fans how can I expect people to come and buy tickets and watch that I couldn't have done it myself or like I said the fans brilliant listen I'm going to let you go uh, but we applaud that attitude Best of luck on Saturday. Thanks for talking to us. I'm going to door stop these two good looking gentlemen. Sugar Hill. <laughs> and I'll, I'll cheers on No, 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 no. <laughs> now, people tell me, look, there's a nice dynamic here. He mentioned it at the top of the show. This this Champs Camp Moss side was. Colours. Yeah, I see them. And I also see these colours. Yeah, yeah. So there's a link Same here. Colours. Kronk and Champs Camp. There's a dynamic there. That's right. Is there a rivalry there? And, and who's better? I don't think it's a rivalry. No. Okay, right, well, you've killed that dream. But <laughs> No, there's no rivalry. I think over the years we've seen what Emmanuel Stewart did in the 70s, 80s and 90s and what Phil Martin did from the riots here and he was creating champions and people were referring to Phil as the UK managed steward or the Champs Camp as the UK crunk and that's what it was. As you see on the wall, Champs Camp all used to wear the gold shorts, um, the crunk over there, the gold shorts, the crunk pro side has rebooted over there. They've got a few winners. 
Champs Camp back here, sort of like rebooted in a way. It's always been here, but the pros are back in here now, and uh, it's just great. I was giving Sugar uh, a tour of the gymnasium and the history of it and everything, and uh, it'd be great down the line if we could do something like a, a Cronk versus Champs Camp prospects type of show, both sides of the Atlantic, and in memory to both Emmanuel Stewart and also Phil Martin. People tell me that the Cronk is not just a gym and it's not just a style of fighting it's a mentality and a lifestyle is that fair enough and if so could you expand on that yeah it's fair enough just as the right the writing on the wall over there about the, the discipline and stuff like that so and the sacrifice that you have to make so it's quite it's quite nearly the same um you know i was just given a tour in the history and i love the way this gym smells you know, it just reminds me of the old crunk, just a little small gym uh, where you get results done. You don't need a big fancy place, but it's just all about the teachings and, uh, you know, learning how to be disciplined and learning how to, you know, make sacrifices for things that you want. And, uh, you know, from what I'm looking at on the walls, all the history, and he's been telling me about the gold trunks. And, uh, you know, that always brings shields to me because that's the colors that uh, I grew up watching. And to see him on the wall over here at the same time and era which, in which we were wearing them over there, uh, you know, in Detroit and, you know, and throughout the U.S., I didn't know much about this gym until I just got here now and the history of it. So he started giving me chill bumps just by listening to the historical stories about, uh, you know, the champions. Look at those champions, and they're just like the Kronk champions. Yeah, I, I probably speak for Joe as well. When we hear you talk about Kronk days, it gives us chills as well. What's the situation with the Kronk? I mean, Emmanuel Stewart, may he rest in peace. Um, it seems to the brand, the mentality, the teachings, uh, I'm going to miss people out, but yourself, Andy Lee, Jonathan Banks uh, are all world-class top trainers now. There's others, I'm sure there are. Uh, what's the situation with the Kronk? Long live the Kronk, I suppose. I mean, everybody still, you know, has a heart for the Kronk. And, uh, you know, just for what it did for them and what it did for so many people. And it, it's something that, that's never going to go away. It's like a, it's like a family. Uh, similar to this gym, I, could, I get that feeling. And, uh, you know, you never forget where you came from. And you're always going to support that, that place. And uh, that's what the Kronk is. Uh, you, you got so many people from Kronk that still uh, have the memories, uh, the same as they had the memories for this gym here with Champs. You know, it all started from a tree trunk, and now you got the, the branches and then the leaves, and, and that's what you have. It, it keeps on going, the legacies. And, and what we're doing here is uh, it's quite the same as the legacies still continue from the teachings that we received growing up and which we appreciate it. And we have to give back in order for it to keep on growing and flourishing. Yeah, amen. A great message. May I ask, the Kronk mentality, uh, again, I don't want to get it wrong, but knockouts. Fans love knockouts. He's going to tell you the same thing. Well, you beat, you beat me to the punch, but would you, I know you don't want to, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself, but is there a champs camp mentality at all, or is it? You know, let's not let's not pigeonhole ourselves. No, but. no chance. Listen, champs camp at the time. You know, and I know. No one wanted to fight them, so we had to take away jobs, and we were never leaving it in the judges' hands. So they were always there on the road, win, and you had to win by knockout, and that was it. And you've seen there, Frank Grant knocked Harold Graham out. Paul Burke beat Billy Shua. Carl Thompson knocked David Hay out. That's champs camp mentality for you. Wins, big fights, knockouts. Don't leave it in the judges' hands, and that's something that we're trying to replicate and carry on. Society and stuff has changed a little bit with that mentality sometimes in fighters today, but something that we still try to nail with the fighters. I was just doing it with uh, a fighter this week who's got a big fight this weekend about knowing how to finish a fight. Some fighters don't know how to finish a fight, but looking for the signs to finish a fight and take him out of there. Yeah, oh, well, look, you're never going to hear me complain about it. One quick one to yourself about Ben Whitaker. Uh, you've had him again over in the States behind closed doors working on different things. How is he progressing and uh, what have you made of what he's done so far in the ring? How much, if you could put like a percentage on it, how much have we seen of Ben Whitaker, of, of what he's capable of so far, would you say? Uh, you haven't seen much of him yet. Uh, you know, he hasn't fought the top caliber fighters uh, that we're grooming him for now. So uh, it's, it's, it's always grooming for something what you're not going to see. You're going to see it down the line if you see it then, but there's always something we're training for that you may not see in the ring, but when that opportunity comes, he'll sure be ready for it. Uh, he's improving a lot. Uh, I wish he could showcase those things that he knows now, but there will be a time for it, and uh, it, it kind of gives it, makes it uh, somewhat of an advantage because they may think he don't know how to do this or he may not be ready for that, but true and all, he's ready for it. Brilliant. Thank you both so much for joining us. Really enjoyed that. What a great chat. Look at him. I can, I can see him. 
our esteemed promoter, Ben Schlong. Come and join us live on Sky Sports. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very glad to be here. Champs Camp is a special place in Manchester, and we were looking to try and get here for a while. Have you had the Joe Gallagher tour? We've had the tour a few times. This was the first gym I actually ever came in. Um, I was about 15, 16, so it's great to be back. And, and it wasn't beach for a while. This was a very famous gym. Ensley Bingham was the trainer here when I first came, and he had Sam Hyde and a few other guys at that time. But sort of fell away the past few years. So to get Joe Gallagher back in here now with Tasha Jonas and building the stable again, it's, it's great. Uh, we've just seen Savannah work out. I mean, she looks great at this new weight. But I also saw Franchon walk in with that. She just brings an aura. Uh, you know, where are you on this one? This is a tough assignment. I think that Franchon perhaps not getting the credit she deserves, uh, certainly online as an undisputed champion. But then there's other factions online that think that this is a done deal, that Savannah's bitten off more than she can chew. Uh, from the conversations you were having behind closed doors with Mick Hennessy and Peter Fury, was there any ever uh, doubt that this was the right fight for Savannah? Look, ultimately, Savannah would have liked to go straight back into the rematch against Clarissa Shields. That, she felt there were things that she did wrong that she wouldn't have done. Once that was clear, it wasn't happening next. This was the only fight for her. We looked at other options, but in Savannah's mind, and in Peter Fury's mind in particular, she wanted to step up. She wanted to go and test herself at super middleweight where she always felt like she'd be more comfortable, like where she would, she, her power would carry through. She could, she could have a nice fight week rather than just thinking about her weight. And now she steps up into another undisputed fight against the best fighter in the world at the, in the division, who's been a champion for a long time, who's rough, who's ready, who's going to use her weight, not the most technically gifted, but she knows how to win. And she'll be looking at Savannah Marshall thinking, this is the wrong fight for you. And uh, yeah, it really is all or nothing for Savannah Marshall. She wins this fight. She probably gets the Clarissa Shields rematch at the weight that she wants. She loses this fight. It's hard to know where she goes from there. Quick one before I let you go. Tessa Jones just over your shoulder. Unless I'm getting tired and getting it twisted, your first world champion uh, under the boxer banner. What a journey it's been when I think there are a number of people that had parked Natasha Jonas and never going to get her crown in jewellery now, uh, a crown in night, I should say, now the chance to become a two-weight world champion. I mean, it's unbelievable, isn't it? It is. It's so crazy looking back, you know, because when we signed her, she was a, she was lightweight. She was a lightweight. Her last fight was Katie Taylor. And to go up three weight divisions, which we had to do in search of her first world title, to win three of that weight, and now we get to come down to where she believes the real big fights are, at welterweight, at super lightweight. That's where she feels the big names. That's where she feels she can secure her legacy. But, yeah, to be fighting for a four world title, and we were worried that she would never get one. It has been an incredible journey, and she just seems to get better and better, and Saturday night will be another emotional one if she, if she can manage to do it. Lovely stuff. And you're OK? I'm very well. I'm, good, yeah, good I'm staying at home all week. Yeah, look, it sounds like Savannah, she said the same. Uh, let's just have a, a flick over there. So, do I take a risk here and go and doorstop uh, Peter Khan? Peter, can I talk to you on camera? God, come on over. Look, that was a risk, wasn't it, if that had gone wrong? Peter Khan, come and join oh, us. Been. I'm, I've been okay, I've not been too bad. Uh, live on Sky Sports. You're here with Fran Sean. I yep. mean, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm in danger of repeating myself here, but. She brings a bit of star quality. When she walks in the room, there's a presence. Um, she's got a big personality. She's multi-talented. Uh, she's got a big team with her, which is always a sign of confidence. Are we all getting this wrong? I mean, um, people think that Savannah Marsh has got a good chance on Saturday night. Uh, are we coming at it from the wrong angle? Presumably you think that Franchon is the best fighter at 168. She's undisputed and she should get through, Savannah. Of course I do, but this is a great fight. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is a fantastic fight. This is a... I mean, you can say this is a 50-50 matchup. This is going to be who gets to really impose their style. And look, this is what Franchone is all about, taking risks, taking chances, um, you know, coming here, traveling here to the UK, taking on Savannah Marshall, giving her an opportunity uh, right after she lost to Clarissa, an opportunity to come in here and then, you know, be undisputed. So, um, no, I mean, Franchone is Franchone's Franchone. She's one of a kind, very unique um, more than prepared, more than ready, but it's going to come down to who could impose their style and, and who could uh, stick to their game plan. Yeah, you beat me to it. I mean, she, she, you can see her there, Dame. Dame. Just turn around, you can see her talking to Ben Shalom there. What is she like? Because she, at the, at the top table at the press conference, she spoke so well. She's a fashion designer. I mean, you, you just got to look at her. She has got genuine star quality. Oh, okay. Star yeah. quality. Thank God you heard me saying something positive there. I, I said she's got an aura, she's got star quality, but what's she actually like? 
Right, now she's close to you. Listen, what you, she, she what, 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 what you're allowed to tell the truth, Franchon. What, what you see is what you get. What you see is what you get. Everything you see about Franchon is exactly what you get. This is not a act. This is not an act. This is who she is. She's uh, like a Renaissance woman. That's the best way to describe her. Yeah. Uh, you know, fashion, fashionista, uh, undisputed, the longest reigning, and the first and only undisputed N Ring magazine. And if you don't know, she has. Uh, debuted at number 30 on Music Week. Uh, she sung for us yes, uh, Tuesday on the news, yeah, and I'm sure it's not going to be the last time. No, but her song, her, oh, I think they're introducing her. We're, we're going to get in trouble here. We're going to get in trouble here. She is the national champion. She is the heavy hitting diva. And most importantly, Saturday night, she is the undisputed super middleweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Franchon Cruz. I think also, Peter, one of the best nicknames in the business as well, the heavy hitting diva. Um, yeah, you were saying, so she's gone in, I think she, what was it that she's at so number 30 so, in the so charts, is that right? She did, she debuted uh, last week uh, at number 30 on the, um, on the uh, commercial hop uh, club charts for Music Week here in the UK with her single Secret Place. We just learned that it's moved up to number 19, which you'll see on Friday, uh, but you can go, uh, you can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere where you download and, and listen to music or stream music, uh, you can listen to her single, Secret Place. Secret Place, okay. I'm going to take a tiny little bit of credit for that because uh, we, we got her to sing it on the news on Tuesday, but, you know, look, if there's a half a chance I can take credit for anything, I'm going to do it. Um, did you see the Shields Marshall historic night of women's boxing here in the UK? And from someone that's entrenched in boxing all over the world, I just wonder from an outsider's point of view what that night did for... Uh, female boxing worldwide, it, it drew record audience, record viewing figures, uh, it went around the world. I wonder if it resonated at all uh, where you were at the time. A hundred percent. I look at it the same way that um, Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano resonated in New York when they fought, which Franchone had fought uh, Elon Sederus yeah. on that same card. That was a magical night. I, I was there for that, obviously, with Franchone. I tuned in, I watched the show, I believe it was last October, That's right. and I mean, but it had a great card. So you also had uh, uh, Baumgartner and, and, and Michaela Mayer, I mean, you, you know, you had a, a great feature and co-feature to really, you know, I, I wouldn't even say a great night of women's boxing, I'd just say a great night of boxing. Agreed, agreed, we've got to get out of the habit of saying that. Peter, thank you very much for joining us live on Sky Sports, we'll no doubt catch you later in the week. Uh, stay with that demo on the pad work here. Um, I'm going to go back to Andy Clark because this will be the first time, uh, unless she went down to uh, the gym when she was over here last time, uh, the first time that we get to see the heavy hitting diva on the pads. I think there's a, I think there is a misconception and I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there and it's just from, from what I read and what I see that I think people think that she uh, is crude. I think people think that she perhaps lacks uh, the technical ability of someone like Savannah Marshall. But I wonder if that's uh, a, a very much a generalisation, that actually she does things uh, differently, but she has subtle variations of, to what she does, um, and she perhaps hits harder than her record suggests. So I only say that from first-hand experience of I, I was able to do her fight against Clarissa Shields uh, from ringside, and her ferocity and the... The, sort of the violence that she approached that fight with um, was a bit of a shock to the system, I think, for, for even Clarissa, even though they had shared the ring many times as amateurs. Um, what do you think will be her strengths in this fight? I agree with you there. I think that you know she's got better skills than people seem to think that she has. Sometimes people form an opinion of someone, that opinion gets put around and this consensus almost becomes fact, but you look at what she did as an amateur, she does have good fundamentals, you can see that here. What she does do in her fights, and she did it against Sederus, is look to get on top of you physically and dominate early. And she can get a little bit ragged in that she, she'll try and muscle punches in a bit. A trainer, Barry Hunter, was talking to her about it during the fight. And, and funnily enough, in the second half, when she maybe got a little bit more tired and looks to box in a bit more of an economical way, she just threw a really simple jab right hand. So I think, technically, she is she is better than people have, I could say, decided that she is. In terms of the knockout percentage, I don't think it really means a lot in women's throw boxing with the two-minute rounds. Only the likes of Savannah Marshall, Caroline Dubois have really got high percentage stoppage rates. But I like her as a fighter. She is aggressive. And, yeah, she is strong. You know, she's 5'8", boxing at 
super middleweight and there's no spare on her whatsoever. So physically, yes, she is she's a strong athlete. But people can stereotype in all sorts of different ways across sport. And I feel like that is what is what has happened to her to a degree. She's not to be underestimated by any stretch of the imagination. In terms of pure boxing skills, you probably would give Savannah Marshall uh, the edge. She's long, she's loose, she can keep it on range if she can hit her hard enough with that jab to make her think twice. And that, that's a big if. I'm scratching my head. I don't have an example, but do you know any other uh, husband and fighter combinations? I think maybe Cindy Serrano, um, but I don't want to get that wrong. So if I have got that wrong, I apologise. But it's a unique dynamic. Christy Martin did it back in the day, I think, did she? I think that might have happened. Um, I think they were they, they were possibly a pairing, but it doesn't happen often. I don't think as, as husband and wife. No, no, it really, really doesn't. It really doesn't. I, I mean, for that for that fight against Cedarus, you know, it was Barry Hunter in the in, in, in headbangers, long live yeah, headbangers, yeah, in, in, in the corner, you know. And when I saw her at the press conference, that was the setup there. That she was doing most of her stuff with him, but obviously her and Glenn have been together. But for a really, really long time. Yeah, I think since the amateurs, I think. Yeah, for a really long time. So, I mean, uh, it, it, that's a, you know, that's a relationship that has got stronger and stronger as the years have gone by. Obviously, um, but Barry Hunter, you know, he's, he's a very experienced guy. We remember him most from Mont Peterson. Yeah, uh, both Peterson brothers. Yeah, yeah and, and just what a great kind of bond he had with them. And I think it is always really important. I, I, I know he, he's a great coach in his own right, but um, and not to do down his accomplishments at all, but. Uh, from my dealings with him, one of the great motivators um, in terms of uh, on backstage, the on the night, yeah. in the corner, uh, just absolutely brilliant. Big round of applause there, so I wonder if that is that. Are we going to. That looks like it, doesn't it? So, Andy, thank you. I'm going to assume my position on the ring apron. I'm going to see before we cut off this stream if I can get an interview. Prashan, are, are you doing any more or are you finished? Well, Paul, I'm just going to do a very quick interview with you. I don't know many others. I think you're a lot of firsts. I don't think I've ever seen anybody hit uh, pads uh, with a brilliant pair of sunglasses like that. Because <laughs> my, my star is so bright, you know, I'm trying to protect my eyes. <laughs> I wish I'd bought mine. Um, we asked you uh, earlier in the week how you're feeling now you're here and like acclimatised now. Uh, obviously, you came here as an amateur. You know the UK pretty well, but how have you settled in? I feel great. You know, it's great to come out a little early to acclimate. Um, the closer we get to the fight, the performer will come out of me. Like, even in here, it's great to have people around. Like, I feel the energy. Negative or positive, it's energy, you know, so I'm ready to rock and roll. Yeah, has it been uh, explained to you, like, the amateurs are coming in now, uh, so it's not just the fighters on the card, the amateur gym are coming in, and the chance they get to see an undisputed champion hit the pads. It's a, it's, it's a pretty special movement for everybody, this. Yeah, oh, so they're coming in? Are they yeah, here yeah, yet? They're now, yeah, they're now. Did they see enough, or we got to give them some more? No, I think that was okay. We don't want to keep... We don't want to keep. That, was that okay for you guys? Was that okay for you? That was okay for you? Okay. <laughs> Did you get a chance to see Savannah work out, or are you not interested? No, I mean, I could go back to but... I got here kind of late, but it's okay. I'll see you Saturday night. Yeah, that Manchester traffic, we can't, uh, we can't be held accountable for that. Mm -hmm. um, what are you expecting on Saturday in terms of the whole environment? Uh, you're the champion, but I wonder, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but do you approach this with a challenger mentality? Johnny Nelson sitting in the gloves are off. You sat down and you, you spoke very much like you had a mindset of a challenger, even though you're undisputed. Oh, of course. I'm a top dog with an underdog mentality. You know, nothing is given. Everything I have is dead earned. You, you like that, don't I you? I do, I do, I do. You have me at hello, but I did like it, I did. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm in hostile environment. Not necessarily the people, but I know what's at stake. I know that I have a person who's hungry to be a champion, but I'm hungrier. I'm hungrier, and this is my destiny. This is what I work for, and this is what I'm going to keep. Thank you for talking to us. You, I think you're due to do a face-off now, so uh, let's hope that this all passes off without any incident. But. Wherever you have been joining us today, wherever you have consumed this uh, stream, make sure you come back tomorrow because we will be live uh, from the press conference. But this is the face-off between champion and challenger. Franchon, Cruz, Desern and Savannah Marshall, the undisputed super middleweight championship live from Manchester. It's billed as all or nothing.
and it is all or nothing for both fighters. One will leave as the undisputed champion, and one will be facing professional defeat and choices to make. That is on Saturday night, 1st of July, live from the AO Arena in Manchester.